Alrighty, this is the Monster Hunter 3U tutorial section of our Citra tutorials overview. Um, you are required, so to speak, um, to check out the Citra build video before this. Um, and if you're interested in doing online multiplayer on our server, you will need to make sure that you have zero tier installed, which we also have a video for. Um, for this video, uh, we're going to be going over the performance settings and essentially getting Monster Hunter 3U running on Citra. Monster Hunter 3U has some quirks. The game is held together by a horrendous level of uh, black magic and duct tape in its coding. Um, with an internal uh, clock speed of 3000 FPS, somehow the 3DS converted that to a native 30 FPS in-game. Um, 3U has some quirks, uh, specifically, and we'll touch on this a little bit later, the pre-rendered videos in-game. There are only three pre-rendered videos or movies in-game that you have to worry about. Um, but those are the biggest challenges to overcome. Most people, when they try to start 3 Ultimate, they feel that uh, the game won't run at all because the first thing they see is a pre-rendered cutscene and it runs at like 12 FPS. That is not how the game functions, it is just those pre-rendered videos. So let's get into this. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up your uh, Citra folder that we discussed in the last video. You're going to go ahead and open your games folder and you are going to drag and drop from wherever you have it your Monster Hunter 3U into your games folder. Pretty simple. Citra will know where it is. You've already established that that is your um, uh, games registry. So now you have Monster Hunter 3 U showing up. Perfect. It's there. It's technically ready to run. But the first thing we're going to do is set it up to run as smooth as possible. So what we're going to do, and let me show you, uh, you're going to right click on Monster Hunter 3 U, come to properties, and then go to cheats. The cheat codes that we use are entirely for performance uh, alteration, um, and they are fairly necessary to make these games run. So if you have problems with running cheats, I apologize, but there is no other way to make this function, and it's very effective at doing what it does. The first thing we're gonna add is what's called no dithering. We're gonna go ahead and throw that in there, save and check it. The next one we're gonna do is remove bloom. Now, dithering is the checker pattern that you see uh, from the 3DS's like screen overlay. Uh, remove bloom. And remove bloom is just a, a gamma. Um, basically, there's very high gamma, very high uh, like light filtering textures. Um, this removing bloom will allow the game to saturate properly and it'll look a lot better. Now, when you try to start Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, Citra tries to run the game at 60 FPS, but it doesn't do anything to correct the internal 3000 FPS issues. So we're gonna run at 30 FPS with this code, and this code will correct the game's internal clock and actually lock it to the intended 30 FPS. You'll notice over here, we do have a 60 FPS code. We'll talk about that in a minute, but I do not recommend it. For now, we have no dithering, remove bloom, and 30 FPS. The game will now run properly, and we're gonna go ahead and open that and check it out. I'll go ahead and make this a bit bigger. Saving. Oh, let's go ahead and switch this over. And because this is gonna be very loud, uh, we'll adjust the audio. There we go. Okay, so in game, you're gonna see that things work and then you get to this pre-rendered cutscene where you can see we're down to 14, 15 FPS range. The way you fix this is in emulation, you go to configure, you go to debug, and here on the CPU clock speed, you're gonna set this to 45. You're gonna see an immediate jump to 30 FPS. 
This is how you solve getting around the pre-rendered cutscenes. However, it still can crash. It's a very finicky fix. It is not guaranteed to work. And as you see, it just crashed here. There is no exact science to getting through the pre-rendered cutscenes. So the only one that you actually have to get through is the very last pre-rendered cutscene at the end of single player. It's the story mission rendered cutscene. I recommend doing a save state before that cutscene and then working on trying to get through the cutscene uh, with the CPU clock at 45%. That is the only issue in the game when it comes to uh, the CPU clocks. Other than that, I recommend running the game at 100%. Um, that is the default, default method to play the game. Getting into the game, uh, a lot of people will say that their biggest issue is actually the rendered cutscene right after you create a character. We're going to show you how to get past that because that does run very, very bad. I've seen it run as low as like 3 FPS. But before we do that, the important setting you need to change in options before you get into game is in game settings and you need to make sure 3D display is turned off. That will fix a lot of in-game performance issues and it, you're, you're essentially gonna clear up the fidelity of the, the, the game graphics. So we're just gonna go ahead and make a quick character so you can see how we get through the save issue or how, how we get through uh, the start of the game. So you hit save. Okay, now that that said saving, now that that said saving, we're actually good to leave. We're sitting at 12 FPS right now. The game is most likely gonna crash. Um, it's it's doing its best, but it's it's a bad pre-rendered cutscene. You can now hit stop, and you can now get back into game. And I'll d do a quick demo of this. Once you have done the character creation and it says saving, you can skip the opening cutscene by hitting continue. and it will load you into Moga Village starting the conversation with the chief. See, you have now skipped the cutscene and you're ready to go. So let's talk about graphics. Right now we are sitting, if you go to emulation and configure, we are sitting at native 400 by 240. Most systems, if we're talking low end hardware, can run at three times native. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and you'll see immediately the game clears up. With our no dithering, remove bloom, and most importantly, the 3D off, you can see that the game is actually looking pretty nice. Um, this is what I would consider to be the default uh, setting for everyone to run. Um, once you have all of those settings in included, uh, this will pretty much run on most, most computers. Um, if you do not include the 30 FPS mod, you're going to have some problems. Again, the game's going to try to run at 60, and it's a broken 60. But if you have uh, computer hardware that is capable of pushing higher-end uh, quality, we have some options for you. Uh, my system can personally uh, run at 4K with uh, all the bells and whistles, and in addition to that, I have compiled the HD classic or the Monster Hunter Classic HD projects, uh, three ultimate textures. Um, the three ultimate textures and all other um, pieces of information for this, the mods, will be in the description below. But if you want to overhaul the look of the game and really increase the graphics, what you can do is download the three U textures. You're going to go to your open custom texture location by right clicking and then you're going to drag and drop that folder in here and hit extract here this will dump all of the extracted texture files and folders into the correct folder that you need and we're going to go ahead and move that back over here and then you're going to go to emulation configure go back to graphics and check use custom textures this is gonna allow those textures to be applied. 
and you want to make sure if it isn't, async custom texture loading is checked. This, uh, long story short, is going to allow the textures to load in with less system impact than it would otherwise. Um, Preload custom textures was the old way to have these apply without dropping your frames, uh, but it is no longer um, really a viable option, especially with textures like Monster Hunter Double Cross having 13 gigs of space. Trying to dump that into RAM takes forever and most people don't even have that much free space. So async custom textures is what's needed. Lastly, you can up the native resolution as high as you want. My system will run it at 10 times native, so we're gonna go ahead and run it at 10 times native with custom textures enabled, and you are going to see a massive dis uh, difference in game. Everything is cleaned up, and the fidelity is now through the roof. Uh, we are technically running at an upscaled 4K now, And you can just see the difference. It looks like it's on a different system. So um, that is how to put everything together um, in terms of the functionality of the emulator. We covered the low end hardware, making sure that you have the performance codes, uh, no bloom uh, or remove bloom, no dithering, making sure your 3D is turned off in the Monster Hunter settings and your 30 FPS code. The last thing that you can do to alter the game is mods. Now, the two mods that I have here are the Monster Hunter 3U HD name fix. In multiplayer, uh, the, the texture pack does not correct your name, like the, the actual name of your character. It tends to be very, very blurry. So we can correct this by opening our open mods location, drag and dropping the hunter name in here, and going to extract here. This gives you uh, a mod that will correct the blurriness of your name. It's very simple and straightforward. You don't have to worry about it. The second thing we have is the Monster Hunter 3U 60 FPS and charm mod. This mod bundles the charm fix for Monster Hunter 3U, if you're not aware, the charm table that your character generates when you first make your character in 3 Ultimate never changes. It is supposed to change every time you turn the game on, because it never change, changes, it means that your character can get locked out of certain charms without this mod. However, when running the game at 60 FPS with this cheat code and this mod, you will get stuttering, you'll get inconsistencies in frame timing, and I have heard people have had corruption of their ROM. Now, I have not been able to duplicate the corruption of the ROM, and I believe I have done something that allows the game to use the charm part of the mod while not having to worry about the 60 FPS. If you run the 30 FPS code in tandem with this mod, it locks the frame rate to 30 FPS, this overrides it, and it still allows for the charm part of the mod to take effect. When you turn on your game, your charm table will refresh properly. I tell you this but i tell you to do it at your own risk i have been using it this way and i have not encountered any issues um to date i have not encountered anything involving save data corruption but this mod has been tricky i run the game at 30 fps and i run the game with my charm mod enabled um to allow the game to run smooth at 30 and still give me the charm refresh but Again, use at your own risk, use caution. Um, this is how I personally run the uh, run my 3U, um, but that is for you to decide whether or not you want it. The last thing that we have for our 3U uh, discussion is multiplayer. Uh, I currently run a server for 3U, 4U, and Double Cross um, over our zero tier network. It is peer to peer. So what you're gonna do, if you wanna play multiplayer, <clears throat> come to the multiplayer tab, hit direct connect to room. This is going to give you a small window where you're going to put in 192.168.192.2. That is our permanent server IP, this never changes. My nickname is just gonna be T for the moment for test. The ports, this is what changes whenever you wanna switch games. <clears throat> 3U, 4U, and Double Cross each have their own ports that we have assigned. 
For three U, it is 30,000 and one to 30,003. So 30,001 is room one, room two, room three. Uh, we'll go ahead and go to port 30,001 and hit connect. Um, oh, okay, I gotta have a longer name, so we'll just go madness and we'll hit connect. Now you can see we're in <clears throat> Monster Hunter 3U hall number one. I'm one of four players, uh, so you are now connected. It's very simple to connect, but each game has its own way of uh, getting in and out of the guild hall. So we'll go ahead and open up 3U one more time and we'll demonstrate how to actually get into the multiplayer rooms. As you can see, we're still running at 30 FPS, <clears throat> even though we have the 60 FPS charm mod uh, enabled. Oh, <laughs> we'll sprint through the dialogue real quick. Okay, so when you're wanting to play multiplayer <clears throat> in Monster Hunter 3U, you're gonna wanna come to Neko over here uh, spam through your conversation. And then you'll get to this screen over here. You can see you have solo, multi, and friend search. The way you play multiplayer is one person goes to multiplayer and then they choose Marina or Tavern because this is a new character. I would have to go to Marina to, to actually access it for the first time. That person creates the multiplayer hall. <clears throat> Once that person has done that, your friends who want to join you come to Neko and they go to friend search. They will come over here and in this section, you will see a little square that has your friend's room that they've already created. Um, from here, you just click on that and you'll be able to join in the room. Um, to demonstrate, we'll go to the marina real quick. It will generate the hall and it'll go through a cutscene. But that is essentially all of the prerequisite material needed to get Monster Hunter 3 U up and running. As you can see, the game runs very smooth. Um, this is upscaled again to 4K. Um, the textures are, I believe, 1080p. And at 30 FPS, Monster Hunter 3 U runs really, really well. <clears throat> I've had some people say that their 60 FPS mod with the 60 FPS code works well. So if you have a really beefy computer, um, by all means, give it a test. But uh, my preferred way to run uh, this game is uh, at 30. Um, with the texture mods, everything looks really good. Um, so that is everything about 3 Ultimate. Um, the next video we're going to be covering uh, for you. Um, I hope this has been helpful and we'll see you guys on the next one.